County Vintners Foundation Community Conversation. Uh, my name is Mike Haney. I'm the Executive Director of Sonoma County Vintners and Sonoma County Vintners Foundation. And we're thrilled to have everyone here today. And we're incredibly excited to have such great guests here joining us for our first community conversation. And let me introduce uh, our guests first. And then I'm going to tell you a little bit more about our foundation. Uh, we're excited to have from the Luther Burbank uh, Center for the Arts, we have Rick Nolan, who's their executive director, and Ashley Money. Worley, who is also their uh, director of um, education and community engagement. So thank you all for joining us today. And then we're honored to have Nzinga Woods from the Sonoma County Black Forum. So thank you for being here today as well. And thank you for having me. Well, we're excited to, to have our first community conversation. It's a program we wanted to do for quite a while. Uh, so we're excited to kick it off here. But I thought what we might do here first is tell you a little bit more about our Sonoma County Vintners Foundation and um, how it's also responded during this challenging year that 2020 has, has, has been. Um, so I can tell you a little bit about our foundation. Our foundation was formed in 1989. And um, its mission, of course, is to support and work with nonprofit organizations throughout Sonoma County, whose missions really focus on education, health and human services, the environment, and of course, arts and culture as well. And since the inception of our foundation, our foundation has been able to raise over $33 million, and that money stays right here in Sonoma County, affecting and, and impacting those in need here in our communities. So we're very excited about what our foundation does. Uh, but of course, um, 2020 has been uh, an extraordinarily challenging year for so many here in our county and of course around the world. Um, and our foundation has been able to respond on multiple fronts uh, to assist those in need. Uh, one of the things we've been able to do so far in 2020 is our foundation has contributed over $4 million back into the community uh, to a variety of nonprofits organizations. Part of that, $1 million of that, was for our community grants program that we issued out in uh, early May. Um, that program worked with about 80 to 85 different nonprofit organizations throughout uh, Sonoma County. But also, in talking with our, our nonprofit organizations at the time, they, of course, COVID-19 had struck and they needed the flexibility of the grants to be able to respond to COVID-19. And we were able to do that as well. So that was a, a very positive thing that, that occurred then. We've also been able to put $1 million into affordable housing. Uh, in addition to that, uh, our, our foundation started our um, uh, winery workers and hospitality workers assistance fund. As we all know, um, with COVID-19, many, many people in the hospitality industry have been laid off or furloughed. And this assistance fund has helped over 500 individuals uh, get through this right now. So we're, we're, we're proud of that fund. And in addition to that, uh, we partnered with our great partners at Redwood Empire Food Bank uh, in food distribution, uh, as well as we're continuing active and ongoing uh, COVID-19 uh, testing here for, for our members and, and for certain members of the community as well. So um, while it's been a challenging year uh, here in Sonoma County for our communities, one of the things that I tell people all the time is it's also inspirational to see how uh, nonprofit organizations like the ones we have here today and others in our wine community step up, engage the, the, the challenges and, and respond. So uh, we're fortunate to have um, these great organizations in our community and those individuals that do such great work. But again, I wanted to say how excited we are to have our guests here today and I wanted to get right with them. Uh, so let's first of all start with uh, Rick. We'd like to start with uh, you and Ashley here first of all and maybe Rick, you could give us a little overview about um, uh, the organization, and then I'll, I'll come to Ashley with a little more details for our programs. Sure, that's great, Mike. And I, I just want to start by saying thank you so much, Mike. Hold on just a second. I've got a phone call coming in here. <laughs> so that hopefully fun. that's not too bad for you now, if you can hear it's me fine. okay. Uh, it's a little bit muted, but not as much as I'd like it to be muted. Um, 
first and foremost, I'd love to say thank you to the Vintners Foundation for your stalwart support of the organization. Uh, you all have helped make uh, the program Ashley's going to talk about possible, and you've helped us really grow the program and grow our service to the community uh, through the mariachi camps and the mariachi ensemble. Uh, the Luther Burbank Center for the Arts has been here since 1981. Uh, a lot of people in our community uh, come to the center over the course of a year, but not a lot of people know about really what's kind of the backbone of what we do, and that's our education and community engagement programs. Um, we have over 20 different programs that this past year served literally over 50,000 children, uh, teachers, and families uh, during the year. And they range from large school shows where 35 times a year we're bringing 1,600 kids into the, the center itself, uh, also to programs that go out into the schools and put teaching artists into classrooms, uh, as well as summer camps that are free and open to the public and visual arts and dance and music, mariachi specifically. Uh, these kinds of programs wouldn't be possible without the support of the foundation or our community and our members at large. So we very much appreciate that. Um, we do about 100 and 50, 160 public performances in the course of a year. And most people are familiar with that. But again, they don't realize that there are many, many, many more programs that are taking place to serve the youth and the teachers, educators, and families in our community. Uh, so I would love to turn it over to Ashley uh, to be able to talk about that. She and her team are the real stars of these programs in terms of putting them together and bringing them to the community. Thanks. Yeah. So like Rick mentioned, uh, our education and community engagement department department works with about 20 different freestanding programs. Um, the school shows make, a, make up a huge chunk of the number of students we serve who come from all over the Bay Area, um, but people come from all over to participate in the professional development. And, and what we're particularly proud of is the focus of putting programming back into the community and not always asking folks to come to us. Um, whether it be residencies happening in schools all over Sonoma County uh, or our summer camps, which take place in different schools all over the county as well. Um, we, we look at use things like Portrait of Sonoma to figure out what communities need us most in this current moment and go out there and, and find a way to serve them. Um, the mariachi program came out of those summer camps, the, the one that you, you so generously fund for help us fund. Um, that summer camp started uh, over five years ago, five, six years ago, and uh, it started with a summer camp at, in Santa Rosa at Santa Rosa City School site and people couldn't get enough of it. And slowly over the course of a couple of years, we were able to expand to a couple different locations. We have satellite locations in Cloverdale as well as Sonoma Valley. Um, more than just mariachi is happening at those camps now. We have visual art, we have dance, we're trying to make theater happen there as well. And it wasn't enough to do just a couple weeks over the summer. Folks wanted more and more. Uh, and so a year round program was started. And this is the third year that we are working with our year round program that serves around 80 kids or so. Um, they come to the center and meet with us. Well, pre COVID, they came to the center and meet with us about three to four times a week, um, getting instruction in music theory as well as performance styles and um, obviously playing as well and we are very proud to be able to take our mariachi group all over to perform out in the public um, and we were proud to perform for the wine auction last year as well um, so now that COVID hit back in march you know we really had to adjust the way we think in order to continue to do what we do best, which is serving our community and making sure that folks have what they need to continue on, but also to be safe in doing so. Um, we're really proud to, to report that the mariachi has not stopped. They have started meeting online within a couple weeks of everyone sheltering in place back in March. And they had their own virtual summer camp that they did. And we're about to start back up for fall online sessions as well. Um, 
you know, at this time, more than ever, arts education is just so important to our young people and to our community. We all find ourselves gravitating towards arts at a time like this. It is our catharsis. It is our relief. When you go binge Netflix, you are supporting artists, whether you recognize it or not. Um, and, you know, the the stats on arts education in, in Sonoma County are not great. Um, if you look at the the average percentage of students enrolled in an art class in Sonoma County, out of the whole population, you're looking at around 20% of students are enrolled in a visual art class, about 11% or so is enrolled in a music class, 5% uh, ish in theater and about 4% in dance. Now that data is a couple years old and it's not perfect as it's so hard to get data like that that is completely representative. Um, but it is a little dismal. That's less than 40% of our population in Sonoma County of students who are able to access art during the school day. Um, so, and compared to the state of California, you know, we're actually a little higher in visual art than the rest of California. It's, it's around 17% for the state compared to our 20, um, but music is lower. The state average is around 14, 15%, and here we are at 11. Um, so, so data like this, taking all of these things into account, we know that we need this more than ever. We are filling a gap in, in what is offered to our students, and it is programs like these that are going to create better, well-rounded citizens who are able to communicate and collaborate and empathize, and all of those uh, 21st century skills or social emotional skills, um, or how, you know, years ago we used to think of them as just, you know, life skills. Um, there's always different language every couple of years they come out with something different but but that's what the arts teaches you know we have core subjects in school that that teach us foundational knowledge will the arts do that too just in a very different way. That, that's fascinating you know uh, Rick and Ashley I am curious you know we talked about pre-COVID and of course in 2020 you know uh, there's not a conversation you have that doesn't mention COVID-19 it seems um, so talk about a little bit more um, how your organization has had the transition due to COVID-19 and what was the impact of uh, those that you serve on, on those people? You know, it's, it's interesting, Mike. Obviously, COVID is a real challenge for all of us, but I've got to give immense kudos to the team at the LBC, uh, both the programming team, the operations team, uh, our education and community engagement team, everybody pulled together and said, let's keep our programs going, but let's move them to online. Let's go virtual. And they literally, a, a week after we were closed, they were talking and a week after that had new programs up to serve our community. Um, on the education side, and I'll let Ashley talk a little bit more about what, what they're doing over there. Uh, we literally were producing a program a day for the kids who were at home with their families that they could access at no charge and participate in. Um, but also on the, the sort of the public side, we're producing each week uh, what we're calling Luther Locals, which is a mini concert on Friday evenings that highlights a local musician or a local band, a local group. Uh, and those are all free of charge uh, for our community. And it's amazing how much uh, response we're getting. Uh, we've had, like I said, serving served over 50,000 kids this year through our programs. That's a new record for us. Last year, it was more like 45. This year, it's over 50. Uh, and we actually have reached about 250,000 people through the, the public programs, uh, coupled with the programs we'd presented up until March uh, when we had to close for COVID. So Ashley, I'll let you talk a little bit more about how summer camps went online and how this next year actually will go online too. Yeah, like Rick said, we started immediately with online programs. Um, within a week, we had started one day, once a day, every day, seven days a week programming for arts. Um, we, we had over 15,000 engagements with our online content between March and the end of June. Um, that's not just people looking at it and scrolling on, that's people commenting, sharing, being particularly interested in what we're putting out there. Um, so for summer camps, we were able to hold three 
one week sessions of a summer art sampler camp. And we did a little bit of African percussion, a little bit of Latin hip hop and a little bit of ukulele. And students did a roughly an hour and a half of each art form every day. And it was a mix of online time, screen time, and then independent practice. So they would have an assignment to go off on their own to work with. Um, and at the end, we put together little uh, performance videos for them to share with friends and family, uh, just as a different way to engage. Um, and we were even able to let students borrow a ukulele if they didn't have one. So we had a pickup arranged where folks who just come in, grab it, sign it out, use it for the week and return it. Um, this fall, focusing with schools in particular, my, my, my entire team's hearts go out to our educators right now because this is, this is hard what they're doing. Um, and we aim to make it as easy as possible and to support them in what they do. Um, as such, we've focused on moving everything that we do online. So all of our programs that exist are available in some iteration virtually. Um, school shows were the biggest change for us. Typically during a school year, we put out 30 to 35 individual performances. Um, school field trips are not gonna really be happening this year, regardless of whether or not students come back to school anytime soon. It's just not ideal. It's not logical to think of gathering in that way. Um, so we are getting a hold of some filmed professional performances that we are making available to teachers and students for virtual field trips free of charge. Um, all they have to do is apply on our website for access to those and they have access for the entire month. So if you sign up for the show in October, you'll get the link for that show on October 1st. You can use it how you see fit in your classroom. And that link will be live all month long for you to utilize with your students along with supplemental resources. Wow, that's fantastic. And, and before I, I jump over to Nzinga, because I want to hear about all of her programs and the fantastic work they're doing there. I wanted to ask you guys at, um, at the Luther Burbank Center for the Arts, um, tell us just a little bit more about those individuals who you are serving and how your programs, how do you see them impacting people? What are the results? What are the visual um, uh, rewards that you see from such a great program? Ashley, would you like to take, take that one? I know you talked a little bit about social emotional learning, yeah. um, but you see almost every day the impact that these programs have on kids. Absolutely. And there's, there's what we call um, formative and summative methods of assessment for these things. You can see it. You can see the change in the kids and in the, the family unit when you're working with the whole group. And then there's, you know, the written assessment as well. And, you know, actually grading someone on how they're improving. Um, and obviously, you know, through these programs, students and are growing in skill sets and art skills, but, but it's so much more than that. You know, there's stories of, um, there, there was a kindergarten teacher who had one of our dance programs in her school, and she was talking about the fact that her it's a bilingual school, a lot of her students, um, Spanish is their first language, and um, a lot of them are just not comfortable speaking in English. They're baby little kindergartners and it's, it's scary. And when you're already shy and introverted, something like that is, is pretty serious. And, and it's a big step to be able to feel comfortable communicating. Um, and dance brought that out of them. And over the course of the year, the kindergarten teacher told us, I attributed 100% to your dance class and the work that that teaching artist is doing with those students, because she was also bilingual. Um, to pull them out of their shell. And, and then these students are able to advocate for themselves and are eager to volunteer to answer questions in class. Um, and it's, it's just a beautiful thing when you, when you have a child participate in a program and they, they tell you, this is, the, this is the only reason I come to school today, or this is the only reason I'm staying in school is because I know you will kick me out if I drop out of school. Um, that's when you know you're making a difference. Wow, that, that, that's, a, that's a great story. So thank you all so much for the great work that you're doing out there in the community. Uh, great information today. And I want to jump over here. We're honored to have Nzinga Woods, who is the executive director of the Sonoma County Black Forum. Welcome. Thank you. Um, just to segue back to you at Burbank, I'm also the co-director, one of the co-directors over in ArtQuest and an art teacher 
dance teacher. So I understand the struggle um, uh, going on right now, but I also am warmed by the faces every morning on time. The kids are ready. Sometimes they're there before I am waiting in the room 20 minutes before because they're so excited just to, to have some kind of consistency and normalcy. So I totally understand that. Thank you. So thank you. Wonderful. Well, Zinga, tell us a little bit about the Sonoma County Black Forum and the organization. Of, you know. Yeah. So we started the organization a couple of years ago, about two years ago. Uh, we found that uh, the community was in need of, of a voice for some of the Black and African American uh, community members. So we created it, uh, created the organization to really serve as a uh, an organization that that led by leading, serving, and thriving. Um, how can we can support our community, our youth, and various events in the community uh, to support students and again our community members? So. Uh, we have various uh, events that happen. So we are one of our, our pillar events is uh, the Youth Summit. And we have that every year at Sonoma State. And what we try to do is bring uh, guest speakers who are going to resonate for the students um, in, 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 in a, um, a forum sense. And then we have a breakdown of classes throughout the day where the students can learn about uh, computer skills. They can learn about coding. Um, they There's a... Um, there is a, a why I can't it's leaving my mind right now but there it there we have a slew of classes for students to support their educational goals whether that is in the traditional sense or in a trade sense so college and career uh, we also have a fair that happens uh, later in the day to support students and where students can come and get information from uh, co colleges um, also trade schools career schools um, so students have a plethora of those of those um, uh, colleges and uh, people to connect with during that time. Uh, students can get all that information. So we, ha we have that every year at Sonoma State. And in addition to that, we have other programs throughout the year that we hold. We support uh, various organizations if they need any support. Like we support the Petaluma Blacks um, organization in Petaluma and any other organization where students uh, or community members are in need. Well, that's fascinating. You know, Sonoma County Vendors Foundation is so honored to partner with the Sonoma County Black Forum. And I'm interested in uh, grants like the one from our foundation or possibly others, how does, how does that directly impact in, uh, your organization and those people that you serve? Well, it, it's, a, it's a tremendous help. In this cycle, we were able to help over 350 uh, community members. Uh, what we're going to do for this uh, current grant, because we have to repurpose it, what we're going to do is what we actually did was put out a survey. We wanted to find out what the community members needed. We can't just, you know, say we're going to repurpose the, the money and not know what is needed in, in the community and what they're um, what they need at the moment. So we put out a, a community survey and what we found the um, top issues were rent, rent mortgage, uh, medical care and sufficient food. A lot of our community members live in food deserts where they don't have access to fresh foods. Um, they may have a mini market where they can get some of their foods, but just to have access to fresh foods and enough to feed their family members, especially during this pandemic, has been a, a top issue um, we saw on the survey. Uh, so we found, we, we decided that that is where we would go. So we decided to partner with the Redwood um, Food Bank to see if we can uh, purchase food from them and have a food drive. So that's what we're working on. We're working on several things right now. So we're working on a food drive to hold about every month at, at uh, a location we're still working on. And in addition to that, we're also working on um, a uh, webinar, an urban gardening webinar to teach people how to start their own garden in their own apartments or small spaces. We think it's important that student, or people have access to understanding uh, how to grow their own foods in an or organic way and in a safe way if they don't have access to food that maybe they can start a, their own small garden. In addition to that, we have, uh, we're in contact with um, Bryant Terry. He's an uh, urban vegan cook uh, and he encourages people to go back to their roots and to uh, uh, kind of research the foods that are um, indigenous to whomever and wherever you're from and how to go back to eating, you know, fresh vegetables and, and, and incorporating that back into your life. So we're working on a couple of those programs to support our community. And so, you know, your funding has been a tremendous help in having us, you know, execute some of those goals. 
You know, I love the creativity in some of these programs. I mean, they not only sound so beneficial, but a lot of fun as well. So I, I think that's really fantastic. But as I was talking with uh, Rick and Ashley, um, for, for you all and your organization, how have you had to pivot uh, due to COVID-19 and how has that impacted your organization as well? Right. So what happened is we plan every year for the youth summit. And instead of the youth summit, we had to scramble. And so that's when we developed our survey and we came up with these optional um, events to have. So we have, our, again, our, our food, uh, food distribution drive, and we also have our um, urban gardening classes. So we, we had to pivot very quickly um, to support our, our community. So uh, those are some of the things that we're doing. Sure, absolutely. You know, and I'm interested too, uh, um, can you tell us a little bit about the visual impacts that, that you see uh, from those that you serve based on the programs that, that you're operating? How are they responding and, and what are you seeing uh, the impacts to that part of the community? Well, um, they, they are heavily impacted. I, I was surprised to see, again, the numbers around rent and mortgage. Uh, and concern for family members, concern for their students being at home, uh, maybe without supervision. We were really, really surprised to see some of that information come through. Um, so we have found that people are really appreciative that we're, we're sending out information saying, hey, we're gonna have a food drive. Would you be interested in that? And people responding and saying, yes, definitely. You know, we, we are you know, trying to find access to food and things like that. And we just, they're having a hard time finding things. So in addition to our food drive, we were gonna create a, a little pamphlet or a little card that goes out that has every location in Sonoma County or a lot of the locations that you can go to every day of the week so they can mark off on their calendar. Okay, if I don't have food today, I can go tomorrow and grab it. So we're really trying to just, again, provide access for our community members. And we think, again, based on the feedback that we've received so far, that they're appreciative of that help. You know, I can imagine, you know, as we all know right now, uh, because of the pandemic and other challenges, you know, there's, there's fear out there, there's uncertainty out there. Some people have lost their jobs uh, and programs like you just said, it has to bring a little sense of normalcy and, and, and a little comfort to people that they can check that box at least for a little while and they don't have to worry about some of those important issues and they, and they can focus on some other things to keep moving forward. Yeah, so a, a, another aspect of our organization is we are a community informers. So as soon as someone sends us any information about job, housing access, we shoot it out back to the community so they have that information. Uh, we try to, again, provide as timely information uh, so people have access to it and, you know, as clear as possible, uh, providing links all the time. So we're, you know, currently revamping our website so uh, we can have community members actually add uh, things to our own calendar uh, so then we can get that information to them a lot faster. Um, we'll approve all that information, but yeah, so we have a, we're working on a link where, you know, community members can put their own information on there of events that are happening to support the community. You know, Zina, I'm, I'm curious, how, how would someone get in touch with your organization if they were curious about your programs, either in need of possibly some of the programs or to support your organization? They can contact us at Sonoma County Black Forum at gmail.com and they can send any requests they need. They can also go to our webpage, Sonoma County uh, Black Forum uh, dot, um, I think it's dot Weebly right now. We're working on the transition. Um, but if you just put Sonoma County Black Forum in, uh, it will pop up and uh, you can go to a, a contact us page and you can put all of your information in there and we'll get back to you in a very timely manner. And uh, Rick and Ashley, I want to ask you all the same question. How can someone get in touch with uh, your organization, either maybe uh, to acquire, inquire about the services or possibly to support as well? If you go to our website at lutherburbankcenter.org and you go to the staff listing under the About tab, uh, all of our phone numbers as well as all of our email links are right there. So you could write to me, you could write to Ashley, you can write to any of the department heads there or give us a telephone call. Fantastic. Well, I want to take this opportunity to thank all of you for the amazing work that not only you, your teams, and your organizations do um, uh, for Sonoma County. You know, one of the, the, the great things about my job is I get to partner with so many wonderful people that work so hard in so many nonprofits throughout 
Sonoma County. Um, you really move the needle, you impact lives, and we just can't thank you enough for the fantastic work that you do. Well, we can't thank you enough for your support. Couldn't do it without you and organizations like yours. Well, we're honored to, to partner with you all. And I think in, in today's times and so forth, partnerships are, are even more important than ever. So we're honored to, to be side by side with you all in this. So thank you. Thank you. Uh, but in closing today, I, I did want to um, also send out a few reminders. As, as many of you know, we do have our Sonoma County Vintners Foundation uh, auction coming up uh, here later on this month, September 17 uh, through 19. And of course, this year, it's all virtual programming. So we have some fantastic events going on that I really recommend and encourage everyone to jump on and enjoy. Uh, we're going to be having our, our best party ever which is uh, September 17 from uh, four to five o'clock. You'll be able to hear our, our chairs of our auction this year, which are Clay Mortson of Mortson Family Wine, Mark McWilliams of Arista Winery, and Jake Belbro of Limerick Lane. They're quite the entertaining uh, guys. So it's gonna be a fun show and we'll be talking about auction lots and things that'll be happening uh, for the uh, auction in the next day. And of course that following Saturday is our virtual uh, auction celebration uh, from four to five again. Uh, you can register for the events. You can go to SonomaCountyWineAuction.com. You can purchase a Celebrate from Home package if you wish, which is including, which has wines and wine tastings and so many things to enhance the enjoyment of, of the auction itself. And of course, there's fantastic auction lots to review and purchase and uh, contribute back uh, to our foundation. Our auction each year is the main fundraiser for our foundation and that generosity from not only our wine community, but from so many people uh, across the nation who uh, donate and, and purchase helps our Sonoma County Vintners Foundation uh, make the grants that we do uh, to so many great nonprofits. So I encourage you and I hope you will join us for that auction later on this month. Um, in, uh, in closing, thank you, Ashley. Thank you, Rick. Thank you, Nzinga, for being here today. And once again, thank you for all your great work. Thank, thank you. you. Cheers. Cheers. All right.